Oh, a couple things that I forgot. First uh, Sunday of the month, we Sunday evenings we have singing practice, so we would invite all of you to be there. Uh, we, as you can tell, are learning new songs, and uh, we appreciate that very much. And there are some songs that we need to learn better and practice more, and we do that regularly anyway, but. Uh, we devote a whole service uh, on the first Sunday of the month, and we'd like to see you there. And I forgot to tell you that uh, Floyd's asking prayers uh, for Virginia, his sister in Oklahoma, who's 90 years old and will be 91, I think, next month. Uh, but uh, she has suffered a reoccurring uh, event of cancer, and she's decided to forego treatment. And so... Let's keep her in our prayers and Floyd and the family as well. Bow with me in prayer. Holy Father in heaven, once again we have the opportunity to study your word together with one another. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that the message will be informative, challenging, uplifting, and certainly a message that we can think about during the week. We recognize, dear Heavenly Father, that there's so much in your word for us to learn and so little time to do it. And we recognize, dear God, that sometimes we learn things that we thought we already knew and we had forgotten. And we are reminded through your word to revisit those things that can be helpful. And Father, we pray that you would bless us in our study of your holy, precious book, and we know, dear God, that it is not in man that lives, says the prophet Jeremiah, to direct his own steps. And therefore, we need the guidance that you provide. We also know, Heavenly Father, that the world has a tendency to lead us away from your, your word through its own uh, uh, ideas. And we recognize, dear God, that this is uh, a very subtle, subtle influence in our lives that sometimes we're not aware of just how much... Uh, the worldly uh, society's standards affect us. But we pray that we might be br brought back to your word and to recognize what is right and wrong by your standard rather than society's. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'd like to read verse 11 from the English Standard Version because it uses a word that I, I want to capitalize on. It says... To this end, we always pray for you, says Paul, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. You know, Christians ought to live daily resolving to aspire to a greater height of worthiness before the Lord, aspire to be better followers of Christ, but at the beginning of the new year, we are more conscious of making resolves than probably any time of the year. And so today I want to share with you a few things that may help us to resolve to become the best we can be for our dear Lord Jesus Christ. And so in the first place, let's resolve to work harder on our weakness of the flesh that keep us from serving the Lord in ways we should. If you have your Bibles, just turn the pages over to Hebrews from Second Thessalonians, and you'll come to chapter 12 and verse 1. I don't know why whoever did this uh, separated the chapters, because chapter 12 is so connected to chapter 11. And uh, he had talked about all the heroes of faith in the Old Testament and what they accomplished, the sacrifices they had made, and the service that they rendered the Lord in spite of unfavorable circumstances. And they were honored for their faith, and therefore that chapter is called the chapter of the heroes of faith. In chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, all those heroes of faith in the Old Testament... Let us also lay aside every weight 
And the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, or fixing our eyes on Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The author obviously is saying that for us to really run that race, we're going to be aware of all the hindrances. Now, you would not expect to put ankle weights on an athlete that's going to run in competition. He will take those ankle weights that he used to increase his speed and endurance. He will lay them off because they are a hindrance of the race. And so we, too, must be aware of what impedes our progress and our struggle. And therefore, if we're going to resolve to work harder um, on our weaknesses, we need to recognize what they are. He says, lay aside the sin that impedes us, every weight and the sin that clings closely to us. Now, obviously he is saying that perhaps the sin that bothers you may not bother somebody else. My weaknesses may not be your weaknesses and vice versa, right? But we all have them. We all have them, and we all struggle with them. And so, have you ever noticed you don't need to do anything for weeds to grow? You don't have to fertilize them. You don't have to water them. You don't have to attend to them. They just grow. And yet, when you're talking about a garden of flowers and vegetables, you have to really work to have it produce the way you want it to produce. And that's the way life is. You don't have to work to cause these things to grow up in our lives and crowd out the Spirit of Christ. They will just naturally occur because of our fallen nature. But like the garden of flowers and vegetables, you really have to weed out pardon me, you have to weed out the bad stuff in order for the good to produce. And so the author here in Hebrews is telling us, you've got to be aware of what it is that you have to work on. And that requires reflection. That requires knowing the distinction between right and wrong, not as the world sees it, but as the Bible states it. And so, you know, good things require hard work and dedication and commitment. You know, nothing worthwhile is really easy when you really think about it. But yet there is a great, great, great satisfaction when you spend all that time and you have these big tomatoes and you've got all these vegetables and these beautiful bouquets or or, you know, whatever you're growing, Ross and Renee, you know. It takes a lot of hard work. And yet there's, the fruit from your labor is the joy and the satisfaction of what you produce. And you feel good that you are strong enough to overcome the obstacles in your life. And so we need to know what entangles us. And this requires brutal honesty with ourselves. And we just don't like that because we like to feel good about ourselves. And sometimes when we reflect upon our faults, it makes us feel bad and it just, just kind of demoralizes us. But God doesn't want it to affect us that way. He wants us to take action. You have to look in the mirror. For example, Rob, you've been too impatient. Rob, you've been too self-absorbed. Rob, you've been too envious. Rob, you've been too focused upon the physical. Now, my list could go on longer than that, but you know what I'm saying. We need to be brutally honest with ourselves. Roy Crutcher, a good friend of mine, one of the writers of the Daily Devotional, had an interesting devotional I posted the other day. Uh, maybe you read it. He used a song as the basis of his devotional, the song, Down in a Hole, You've Got to Stop Digging. 
very interesting, adequately describes the need for making New Year's resolutions. The words, you're down in a hole and you've got to stop digging, this ain't no way for you to be living. If you're in the hole, you've got to stop digging if you want to get out. And so it is with our sins. If we want to stop those sins, we've got to stop our sins. Now, another aspect in Hebrews chapter 12 about this is that he says, when you're doing these things, when you are laying aside the encumbrances and impediments and whatever is hindering our race, we got to fix our eyes on Jesus. Uh, this translation says just simply looking to Jesus. It's a little weak, but it's okay. Uh, September, back in September, I preached a lesson titled Fixing Our Eyes on Jesus, and I based it on this particular passage. But what better time to visit this verse than at the beginning of the new year? Question, have we fixed our eyes on Jesus? Or another question, what are we fixing our eyes on? Are we distracted from our spiritual concerns because of the temporal uh, and material ones? Granted, we must give attention to the material needs, and it takes a lot of our time and our energy, and we may have very little energy left for spiritual things. Our busy lives are sometimes uh, our worst enemies. Our busy lives may be taken up by things that are not bad. They're not evil. They're, they're not immoral. But they are so, so much in demand of our attention that it robs our attention from the things that matter most. Uh, recently on Facebook, there's an illustration of this point. A man is in a deep dungeon... And there's a ladder next to him leading to the top. He's cold, so he takes the rungs of the ladder and he builds a fire to keep himself warm. And now he can't reach the next rung of the ladder to get out of the dungeon. He's sacrificing safety for comfort. It's similar to burning one's bridges, right? But you can see that that is... What a lot of people do, they sacrifice something that is uh, more important for comfort. And they are distracted by the immediate pressing situations than thinking about eternal things. Our focus determines the direction that we go. A farmer that is plowing furrows can't plow in a straight line unless he focuses on a point ahead of him. And how many deadly accidents happen because people take their eyes off the road and they're looking at their cell phone or they're trying to text or they're reaching behind the seat for something or down on the floor and they're dead. Or other people have been killed. And it's just this principle that is probably plaguing most of us is that we allow our attention to drift off into non-spiritual things too often and to, to uh, uh, just too often. I can't think of the next word to say. And so fixing our eyes on Jesus is more than saying, oh, Jesus, every time something bad happens. Fixing our eyes on Jesus is a principle by which we live. And notice what Paul says, and it's best illustrated by this statement that there is this conscious awareness daily of who we are. Galatians 2.20, Paul says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. I tell you, I feel like a failure every time I read that verse. Don't you? There is so much that we need to do. We must, as Paul prayed, to resolve for good in every 
every work of faith. This idea of resolve may be a little weak here. Resolve means to come to a definite or earnest decision about, determined to do something. But the word here is much deeper than that. It talks about the feelings of strong emotion in favor of something. And so it's more than just saying it's practical that I stop smoking or it's practical that I don't do this. You know, uh, I'll have more friends if I do this. It's, it's this deep feeling of conviction, a feeling that, that propels us in favor of something. And so resolve is a little weak, isn't it? When you think about that. Now, the good in this verse can be either a quality of excellence or it is the good that is found in relationships with others. And I think the latter is intended here. Now, last week we spoke of a better world beginning with me. It includes kindness, gentleness, generosity, good manners, thoughtfulness, the qualities we see in Jesus. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, it's not the person, but it's the character, it's his life, and his, his, his example. You know, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, things change. We see things differently. You know, in the day when we, ta- when we used film cameras, we could take a picture of a barn with red flowers all around it and the barn will look red it will take it will take the reflected color of the flowers and the whole scene would have an appearance and aura of red the same way with a sunset a colorful sunset will make the surrounding items look similar to that sunset Well, professional uh, photographers know how to compensate for that and and also use filters to adjust that. But And the eye makes uh, instant adjustments. We don't see what the film sees. But the point that I'm making is that we will unconsciously affect other people by the lives that we live. And it's very important that even though we can't see it with our human eye, if we live the way we should, if we resolve to do the good that we should, it's going to make an impact upon other people. And I think it's very empowering to know that God gives us the strength to make our resolutions for good. God works in us through His Holy Spirit, through His Word, to bring this to fruition. And I think it's time to admit that when we fail, it's probably because we have tried to do these things on our own strength rather than lean upon the power that God provides. Let me give you a few verses of Scripture and see if you don't agree with me on this. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul never, ever took credit for all the great that he did for the Lord. He always said it was through the strength that God provided him through Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.20. You're probably more familiar with Philippians 4 and verse 13. But we ought to all embrace this one. Ephesians 3.2 as well. Now to him that is able to do far more abundantly, uh, beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The strength does not come in a medicine bottle. It's not by restricting certain foods. It's not through exercise and self-torture and self-denial. But it comes through the word of God and fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, worship and Bible study, and giving up our doubts. One thing that we learn, faith, so a strong faith will overcome doubt. When Peter was drowning 
in the Sea of Galilee and Jesus rescued him, he says, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Little faith doubts. Strong faith overcomes doubt. And how do we get faith? Romans 10, 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and the hearing by the word of God. So let's resolve to more, be more involved also in prayer. This verse tells us that Paul is praying that we will resolve to do these good works and works of faith. Mm. Jesus was a man of faith. <clears throat> I wrote an article one time showing how Jesus prayed before he made every major decision in his ministry. And not limited to that, but he certainly did pray before he made any major decision. When you travel, do you have a prayer with your family before you travel? We do. I think it's very important that we become more a people of prayer. Paul begins almost every letter that he wrote to Christians, to churches or individuals with a prayer. And that makes a beautiful study someday. Look at Paul's epistles in just the first chapter of each of, of those books and see what he says and just kind of glean what he's praying for and realize what he wants for us today. <clears throat> you know, what would you ask Jesus if you spent three years with him as the apostles did? What would you want him to teach you? The apostles could have asked him, would you teach us to be teachers like you? Would you teach us to interact with sinners the way you do? The one thing they asked him Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. The Lord's Prayer was given to teach people how to pray. And so, if we read the life of Christ and his teachings on prayer, we will find that prayer ought to be something that we resolve to do this year more than ever before. I have told you many times that I pray for each one of you by name in my prayers daily. And I would urge you to do the same. I solicit your prayers. I believe this should be a New Year's resolution. So what have we been talking about this morning? We pointed out the need to resolve to work harder and deal with our weaknesses. And how to go about it. And we have seen that we should resolve to fix our eyes on Jesus, thereby removing our fixation on the distraction and the dangers to our faith. We have seen that we should resolve to pursue doing good in every way possible and discover the power of God to help us to do that by developing a deeper faith. And we have seen that we need to resolve to be more consistent and persistent in our prayer life which in turn helps us develop our own spiritual condition. And God will give us the strength to fulfill our resolves. Thank you for your kind attention to the lesson this morning. We're going to close by offering the invitation, either become a Christian, be baptized, or resolve to be a more faithful Christian. If you need the prayers of the church, we're here to accommodate you. Please come as we stand and as we sing.